The Epilepsy Foundation acknowledges the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land on which this property stands. We respectfully recognise Elders both past and present. Hello, I'm Patrick Carney. I'm a neurologist uh, based at Eastern Health um, and I have an interest in uh, caring for patients with epilepsy. I'm talking today as part of the Epilepsy Foundation Living with Epilepsy uh, series and I hope to give you a bit of insight into what it means to be a neurologist and how I think a neurologist can help patients with epilepsy and, and patients and their carers with epilepsy uh, have a better outcome and better care of their epilepsy and the other issues that uh, occur in patients with epilepsy. I think the start of my job really is the start of the diagnosis of epilepsy and I think one of the skills that an epilepsy specialist in particular, uh, but obviously neurologists more generally bring, is that ability to really identify uh, epilepsy accurately to make an accurate diagnosis. Uh, sometimes uh, there can be delay in, in discovering that someone has epilepsy. Uh, seizures take many different forms and, and the experiences that people have with seizures aren't always interpreted by all doctors as being seizures. So we bring that expertise as we see lots of patients and hear lots of stories about epilepsy. So I think that's a, a, an important starting point. Our role obviously extends beyond that in, in making a, a, an accurate diagnosis. It might give us information as to the type of epilepsy and, and provide uh, guidance as to the best investigations and the best treatment options, and that's clearly very important, uh, sort of initiating the most appropriate treatment to start, but then also considering different treatment options along the way if, if initial treatment doesn't work. Um, Epilepsy unfortunately has a lot of comorbidities and for many patients the seizures can sometimes be uh, the second problem after problems with concentration, thinking, memory and also problems with mood and anxiety which often go hand in hand with epilepsy. Epilepsy specialists are really well aware of these concerns. Um, we deal with this a lot in our day-to-day -day practice with our patients and uh, we have the resources to support our patients with these problems and, and probably most importantly help direct them towards professional who are experts in providing assessment and care and support for these sorts of epilepsy comorbidities. The, there's good evidence that says that, you know, about two thirds of the time we do get it right the first time. Um, um, but sometimes the medications we choose aren't tolerated and uh, we can't as yet tell just by looking at a patient exactly what's going to be the best medication for them. There are a number of decisions we make about choices for medications based on the potential side effects and, and what's most likely to suit that patient's epilepsy, but we certainly don't get it right. A number of patients with some changes to medications we do achieve an effective control of seizures without side effects. In some of our patients we struggle to get in control of their epilepsy with a range of different medications. And alternatives to medication don't always have to, pres to have to follow commencing medication, but usually that's the starting point for, for how we approach uh, patient care. There are a number of different treatment strategies and treatment options which are considered, and those treatments uh, are, are an important consideration when it comes to managing our patients. So we, we weigh up the different options which are available to try and um, meet the, the needs of our patients. And, and clearly listening to what the patient wants is very important in that process. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, medications remain the mainstay of therapy and, and we have an ever-increasing array of different medications and um, can often find a balance between side effects and effect, but, but certainly there are some patients where this is a challenge. There are a number of alternative therapies that we can consider other than uh, medications. Um, there's interest in dietary therapies uh, as an alternative to medications and the, the, f uh, the ketogenic diet is one example and also the modified Atkins diet is a, a, another. The management of epilepsy uh, always uh, involves the primary treatment such as medication as well as lifestyle factors so it's always important to consider that um, attention to good lifestyle, uh, good sleep, minimising the sorts of stresses or triggers that might trigger uh, seizures is important. In a select group of patients, epilepsy surgery can also be uh, a treatment option. Um, uh, this certainly isn't available to all patients uh, and, and may not be suitable for all patients, but in, particularly in patients who are, are refractory to, to medical therapy, to, to treatment with medications, this is something that we would consider. Some patients 
don't need medication for life. Um, and a con we would always consider whether treatment with epilepsy medications is required for life or whether patients can potentially come off the medications. Uh, one of the things that exper experience uh, brings to the care of patients with epilepsy is knowledge of the conditions where um, treatment may not be required lifelong. There are certainly a number of paediatric epilepsy conditions, so childhood epilepsies, which, which tend to occur during childhood and that the child may grow out of it. This is less common for adult epilepsies and, and many more of the adult epilepsies when diagnosed do need some form of treatment for life. But we would always consider this and, and there's often an open discussion with patients about is this still the best therapy for me, do I need to stay on this and, and can I consider other options. So the issue as is to whether your medications can interact with uh, your other medications that you might, need to, you might need to use is really important. There are a couple of clear examples with medications which inf affect the, uh, the metabolism or breakdown of other medications that you might take. A number of the older epilepsy medications, although very effective, are, are known to influence the breakdown of other drugs. And so it's always important to disclose what medications you're taking to your doctor um, uh, and ensure they know about your epilepsy medications before making other changes. In addition to that, there are some concerns that medications that you might use to treat other conditions can influence your epilepsy. So they might perhaps increase the risk that you could have further seizures. As a general rule, this, is a, this isn't as big an issue as we might think it is, although it's still a consideration. Uh, and any time you're seeing a doctor and making some adjustments to medications, you need to be sure that they're aware that firstly you have epilepsy and that you're taking medications for epilepsy. We see some of these concerns particularly raised with the medications that are used for treating mood and anxiety, but although there are concerns uh, regarding the treatment of mood and anxiety in patients with epilepsy, it's such a common problem and we often treat these conditions very safely with medication. GPs are usually quite familiar with this and you don't always need to see a neurologist if you're adding in additional medications, but certainly if a GP wasn't comfortable they'd normally refer for, for the support of a neurologist to help make this decision. It's a good question as to whether a, a, a patient with epilepsy does need neurology care for life. Um, there are many patients who are stable, respond very well to their medications, and many of the issues that, that arise during their care can be comfortably managed by a GP. Um, we grapple with this issue, and I'm currently looking at staffing in my clinic and how I can support my patients and, and, and trying to find that best balance to make sure that we can deliver care for the patients who have key ongoing active epilepsy issues uh, rather than those patients who are really very stable and doing, doing well. I always encourage my patients to have a good relationship with their GP and make sure that we're sharing care. So I'm making the epilepsy specific decisions but a GP is involved along the way to support. Occasionally um, patients will be concerned about ongoing use of medications and want to revisit the diagnosis and re revisit the treatment and I think that can be really appropriate. Uh, it provides reassurance for the GP, it provides reassurance for the patient. But there are many patients that I see over a number of years who I discharge from my clinic and do, who are perfectly well cared for by the GP in the long term and don't need my support. The question about intermittent review of patients with long-standing epilepsy is a complex one. I think with a, a good GP who's engaged with the care of their patient, that review, with an ongoing review with a GP is often all that's required. There are times in your life though where things might change and you might feel that it's important to revisit that epilepsy diagnosis, discuss your tr current treatment and, and ensure you're on the best treatment. Medications change, treatment options change and it might be that it's worth reconsidering that diagnosis and changing treatment. Also, a significant changes in your life uh, might, might lead to, and particularly um, things such as pregnancy are, are obviously a situation where revisiting your epilepsy management is, is really important. As to the issue of pregnancy uh, and uh, treatment of epilepsy, I think it's vital you see a neurologist before conception. Many women uh, in fact, most women have very successful uncomplicated uh, pregnancies despite having epilepsy. It's very important though that before conception you ensure you're on the right medications. Some medications uh, have very low, if any, risk in, in, uh, in pregnancy. Uh, this is for the developing baby, whereas other medications are considered quite high risk. The neurologist will help advise you about what the risks are for your different choices and which medications you should or should not be on. Some women may choose 
to try to come off medication altogether for con prior to conception, um, and others would be very fearful of seizures. So uh, what a neurologist can do is to provide you with confidence that the decisions you're making are in your best interest and in the best interest of your future baby. Neurologists can provide support during pregnancy too to the obstetrician so that you can have an uncomplicated and successful pregnancy without epilepsy um, having a negative impact. Uh, there are some situations where I think it's uh, quite sensible for, for a GP to refer a patient back to see a neurologist. I've already touched on the uh, issue of uh, pregnancy, which is obviously a very important one. Other situations include uh, an unexpected seizure and some patients who are stably managed with epilepsy over a, a number of years may ha suddenly have a seizure unexpectedly and this is a good opportunity to review the diagnosis, particularly if you've not been engaged with a neurologist for some time. At times patients request review simply because they want to ask the question again, do they still need to be on this medication? Is this still the best treatment for them? And I think that's perfectly reasonable and sensible uh, uh, situation to go back and, and, and be seen by a neurologist. Uh, any new potential side effects associated with medication and also any changes in mood, behaviour um, or, or other concerns which may be related to your epilepsy are, are reasons to, to consider uh, a referral back to a neurologist. Uh, on occasion we also see patients who develop new neurological symptoms and a question uh, as to whether these could be related to epilepsy or not and this might be a reason why you would seek referral. As a neurologist we often get engaged with supporting patients regarding their careers. Um, I often do letters uh, to people's workplaces and in other situations to provide uh, advice and uh, support to uh, employers about what the impacts of a patient's epilepsy has upon uh, their workplace. I can do epilepsy management plans for uh, employers so that they're sure that if a seizure were to occur at work that they could provide the best care and support for that employee. Unfortunately, epilepsy does have some impacts on career choices. There are certain careers where a diagnosis of epilepsy um, can make uh, uh, involvement in that career difficult or may prevent participation in that career. Um, a, a number of uh, neurologists certainly have experience in, in these issues and can provide advice to that effect. Uh, often what we can also do is provide communication uh, to potential employee, employers to ensure that um, they understand the impacts the condition might have. Telehealth is, uh, telehealth is one option to uh, manage your epilepsy. Um, where I work at Eastern Health, we're developing our telehealth uh, service and I have to say I think we're a little bit behind some of the other services, whereas other services around Victoria have quite well developed telehealth services providing care. Uh, a number of specialists uh, such as myself also provide some telehealth services in private practice. I think telehealth can be a vital way of providing care for patients who uh, are out of your area, uh, who are who are remote to, to where I work or where other neurologists work. We have a great concentration of services in the big city and the, the expert uh, epilepsy uh, focused services aren't as well supported in rural areas and this is a good opportunity uh, to provide that expert care to, to all patients with epilepsy regardless of where they live. Uh, as to what services are provided in your area, uh, that's highly dependent on the area and, and it's certainly worth speaking to your local um, uh, tertiary referral centres to see what support can be provided. Um, often when uh, patients come particularly to a first appointment to see a neurologist regarding a possible diagnosis of epilepsy, it can be an overwhelming experience. Um, I strongly encourage people when they come to an appointment like this to actually come with a list of questions because um, as we're gathering information and then providing feedback about our assessment, it can be really quite overwhelming and it's important that you feel that the outcome of an appointment with your neurologist provides you with answers to key questions. Those sorts of questions include, what tests do I need to confirm this diagnosis? Are you sure this is epilepsy? Are there any other possibilities? What medications might be effective in treating my condition? Or what are the side effects of these medications and what should I be worried about or watch for when, I'm on, when I start this medication? Are there other conditions that go along with the diagnosis of epilepsy that, that I need to know about and I need to watch for? Um, 
People often obviously worry about uh, impacts on driving, which is a very important concern for patients with epilepsy. So your neurologist will be able to give you information about uh, driving with epilepsy and, and what a diagnosis of epilepsy means uh, and what's required so that you can safely drive um, in the future. Um, there are any other questions which you think are important for you are valid questions to ask your epilepsy specialist. So please write a list to make sure that you get the answer to the questions you need to feel confident about your care. Um, I've been asked to speak about uh, epilepsy and driving as this is a, a very common cause for concern for patients uh, who are newly diagnosed uh, with epilepsy, experience the first seizure and may not go on to develop epilepsy or patients with longer standing epilepsy. There are very strict uh, uh, guidelines regarding when someone can drive after a seizure. Uh, this information is available uh, publicly on the website um, and it can be found uh, in the Austroads Assessing Fitness to Drive. Um, in Victoria, as in all states around Australia, the uh, driver's licensing authorities um, enforce these, uh, these guidelines um, regarding driving. The role of your epilepsy specialist or neurologist is to provide information to the driver's licensing authority so they can assess your fitness to drive so that at the appropriate time you can return to driving. GPs are also often involved in this process and GPs provide a lot of communication uh, to driver's licensing authorities about um, uh, uh, fitness to drive. Uh, this is, this is a, a topic that uh, you should definitely raise with your specialist when you see them um, as it has important implications uh, for your safety and also for your employment. Um, I guess the final thing I'd like to say about epilepsy care is that the, the role of a neurologist in epilepsy care can occur throughout the life course of your epilepsy. I think we provide a vital role at the start uh, when the diagnosis is made to ensure that diagnosis is accurate. I think that there are times throughout um, your life where support from an epilepsy specialist uh, can be quite valuable in helping make key decisions when there are changes to your life. Some of our patients have ongoing seizures despite uh, uh, appropriate selection of medications, so they need ongoing care with an epilepsy specialist, uh, particularly as treatments change. Uh, opportunities for, for management change and it's best to be engaged with someone who can bring the latest technology, uh, 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 medications and other treatments uh, to the patient to provide the best support at that time. Um, uh, an epilepsy specialist uh, has an understanding of the breadth and the depth of uh, epilepsy care and for patients with complex epilepsy provides a great service. It's also important to understand that there are a number of very good specialist uh, neurologists who are not experts in epilepsy, but nonetheless provide very good care to our patients with epilepsy. And I have very good therapeutic relationships with a number of general practitioners who really provide expert epilepsy care as well in support of, uh, in support of me. In my patients where epilepsy is effectively treated and doesn't have to uh, have such a significant impact upon their life. And this is a large number of the patients I see. They are ably supported by their GPs and, and, uh, and have a very good therapeutic relationship. Uh, and my support isn't required. I hope you found this uh, discussion uh, helpful and, and informative regarding um, how an epilepsy specialist might assist you in the care of your condition. Um, this presentation is part of the Epilepsy Foundation Living with Epilepsy series. Uh, more information about living with epilepsy and some of the uh, topics that I touched on uh, in this discussion can be found on the Epilepsy Foundation website.